Hello friends, here we have matrix A. Now let's construct a new matrix with the help of this matrix. First, let us push the first row of this matrix A in such a way that block 4 will fall first and then the block 1. Now let us push the second row of this matrix A in such a way that block 3 will fall first and then the block 2. The new matrix formed is known as the transpose of the matrix A. So what we have essentially done is we have interchanged the rows and the columns of the matrix A to get the matrix transpose of A. That is the first row and the second row in the matrix A have become the first column and the second column in the matrix transpose of A. So, transpose of a matrix is obtained by interchanging the rows and the columns of the matrix and is represented with the superscript T. Now, let us say there is a matrix B and we have to find its transpose. The first column of the transpose of the matrix B represented as B superscript T will be the first row of the matrix B and the second column of the B transpose matrix will be the second row of the matrix B. Friends, what can we say about the order of the transpose of a matrix? Let us say there is a matrix X whose order is M by N. Now, is it possible to determine the order of the matrix X transpose? The answer is yes, we can determine. Since matrix X is of the order M by N, which implies that matrix M has M rows and N columns. Now the matrix X transpose will have N number of rows and M number of columns. Since to get the matrix X transpose, we will interchange the rows and columns of the matrix X. So we can conclude that if a matrix is of the order M by N, then its transposed matrix will be of the order N by M. Let us now discuss some properties of the transpose of a matrix. Here we have the matrices A and its transpose. Now the transpose of the matrix A transpose will be same as A. So from this we can conclude that the transpose of a transpose of a matrix is the matrix itself. Let's move on to the second property. For the second property, we will multiply the matrix A with the scalar K and get the matrix K times A. Now if you observe carefully, the transpose of this matrix K times A will be same as K times A transpose. So we can conclude that for any scalar K, KA whole transpose will be equal to K times A transpose. To understand the next property, consider two more matrices, B and its transpose. Now let us find the transpose of A plus B and the sum of A transpose and B transpose. If we do so, we find that both of them are equal. So therefore we can conclude that the transpose of the sum of matrices is equal to the sum of transpose of the matrices. The same property holds even in the case of subtraction as well. That is, the transpose of difference of two matrices will be same as the difference of transpose of those two matrices. This time, let us find the transpose of the matrix AB. Surprisingly, we will find that the transpose of the matrix AB will be same as B transpose multiplied by A transpose. That is, transpose of the product of two matrices will be same as the product of the transpose of each matrix in reverse order. The same property can be extended to any number of matrices. That is, the transpose of the product A1, A2, so on AN, where A1, A2 and so on AN are matrices, will be same as AN transpose multiplied by AN minus 1 transpose, so on A2 transpose multiplied by A1 transpose. The next property is, for any square matrix, the determinant and the determinant of the transpose of that matrix will always be equal. We can clearly see that for the matrix A, 
its determinant and the determinant of the matrix A transpose are equal and they are equal to AD minus BC. Based on the transpose of a matrix, two types of matrices are defined and they are symmetric matrices and skew symmetric matrices. If the transpose of a matrix is equal to the matrix itself, then that matrix is known as the symmetric matrix. Now, this matrix is not a symmetric matrix since its transpose is not equal to itself. An intuitive statement that we can claim is any rectangular matrix can never be a symmetric matrix because for a rectangular matrix, the order of that matrix and the order of transpose of that rectangular matrix are always different which implies that they can never be equal. So, we can conclude that any rectangular matrix can never be a symmetric matrix. Now consider these matrices B and C. You have to find whether these matrices are symmetric or not. So, we can see that transpose of B is equal to B whereas C transpose is not equal to matrix C. So, we can conclude that only matrix B is a symmetric matrix. From matrix C, we can conclude that every square matrix need not be a symmetric matrix. Now let's define the skew symmetric matrices. A matrix A is said to be a skew symmetric matrix if A transpose is equal to minus A. As we have already discussed, the rectangular matrices can never be symmetric matrices the same thing applies even for skew symmetric matrices as well. That is, any rectangular matrix can never be a skew symmetric matrix. So, here we have matrix A. Let us see whether the matrix A is a skew symmetric matrix or not. So, we will find the transpose of the matrix A and we can clearly see that A transpose and minus A are not equal. So, therefore, we can conclude that the matrix A is not a skew symmetric matrix. Wait a minute. We observe that all the elements except the principal diagonal elements in both the matrices A transpose and minus A are equal. So, if the principal diagonal elements in the matrix A are all equal to 0, then the matrix A will be a skew symmetric matrix since A transpose will be equal to minus A. For a matrix to be skew symmetric, it should follow two basic conditions. The first condition is the matrix should be a square matrix. And the second condition is all the principal diagonal elements in that square matrix must be equal to zero. Here is a matrix B. Now you find out whether this matrix is a skew symmetric matrix or not. The matrix B is a skew symmetric matrix since B transpose is equal to minus B. Before we conclude, let us define an orthogonal matrix. A square matrix A is said to be an orthogonal matrix if the product A into A transpose is equal to A transpose into A and it is also equal to the identity matrix. For example, in this matrix A, we can clearly see that A into A transpose is equal to A transpose into A and it is also equal to the identity matrix of the order 2 by 2. So therefore, we can conclude that this matrix A is an orthogonal matrix. Now, is it possible to find the determinant of an orthogonal matrix? Let's try to do it. If A is an orthogonal matrix, then we know that A into A transpose is equal to identity matrix I. Now, applying the determinant on both the sides of this equation, we will get determinant of A into A transpose is equal to determinant of the identity matrix. We know that the determinant of A into A transpose is equal to determinant of A into determinant of A transpose. And we also know the fact that determinant of A and determinant of A transpose are equal. So finally, we will get determinant of A whole squared is equal to determinant of I. And we know that the determinant of an identity matrix is always equal to 1, from which 
we can conclude that determinant of an orthogonal matrix is equal to plus 1 or minus 1. So friends, we can conclude that the determinant of an orthogonal matrix is either plus 1 or minus 1. That's all for today. In our next video, we will be doing some problems relating to the properties of the transpose of a matrix. As of now, let's summarize what we have learned so far. The transpose of a matrix is obtained by interchanging the rows and the columns of a matrix and is represented with a superscript T. The transpose of a transpose of a matrix is the matrix itself. The transpose of the matrix K times A is same as K multiplied by A transpose. The transpose of the sum of the two matrices is equal to the sum of the transpose of those two matrices. The transpose of the product of the matrices is equal to the product of the transpose of each matrix in the reverse order. The determinant of a matrix and its transpose are always equal. For a matrix A, if A is equal to A transpose, then that matrix A is known as symmetric matrix. For a matrix A, if A transpose is equal to minus A, then that matrix A is known as Q symmetric matrix. A square matrix A is said to be an orthogonal matrix if A into A transpose is equal to A transpose into A and it is also equal to I the identity matrix. The determinant of an orthogonal matrix is either plus 1 or minus 1.